I've got a big problem with the X100 6 and I've only been using it for two weeks. What's this problem you may ask? Well, let me explain. I've been using the X100V or X105. Let's go with X105 for consistency's sake. I've been shooting with it exclusively for the last four years and I've made some of my favorite images with it. And I've even released a zine with the photos out of this camera. Uh, I also wouldn't be here on YouTube if it wasn't for the X105. So yeah, suffice it to say, I know this camera very well. So when I had the opportunity to test out the X106, of course, I was excited because, you know, new gear and all that. So here we are thinking, is this camera worth the hype? A little bit of history and context before we check out what's new on the X106. The X105 was a special milestone for the X100 series. It marked the first time Fujifilm overhauled the 23mm f2 fixed lens and included weather sealing, you know, if you attach the right accessories. It was a substantial leap from the X100 IV, but at the time it was still a pretty niche camera and it was only desired by those within the Fujifilm community, which certainly wasn't as big back then. The jump from the X105 to the X106 isn't as groundbreaking, more or less what I expected. We got the usual hardware hand-me-downs from the XT family, the X-Trans 5 40 megapixel sensor and the X-Processor 5, a few external cosmetic changes that don't really impact the general functionality of the camera uh, aside from the placement of the drive delete mode button being closer to the right for easier access and the uh, extra tilts of the LCD screen. But you know, all this still feels pretty standard until of course, you know, the introduction of IBIS. I feel there are two camps when it comes to X100 and IBIS. You've got those that really want it and those that are kind of indifferent. Personally, I'm on the indifferent camp mainly because of my style of shooting and what my intended use cases are, but we'll get to that in a bit. The X106 comes with all the latest film simulations too, including a new one called Reala Ace. Other than that, the only notable changes include the lower base ISO, higher max electronic shutter speed, uh, new subject detect autofocus options, improved autofocus, and 6.2K video at 10 bit 422. So that was a brief summary of the notable features that are new to the X106. The, the cynic in you is probably wondering, is there anything bad that I should be wary of before I commit to my purchase? Bad is kind of a extreme, I wouldn't go that far, but before I point those out, let's just take a moment to praise the IBIS. There have been a lot of times where I have taken photos with the X105 and I wish that I had just a little bit more stability. The pictures are usable on social media, but when enlarged, you really start to notice that slight blurriness from the you know, camera shake. That six stops of stabilization on the X106 really helps in low light situations when you want to have a photo with the lowest ISO possible. I found that for me, I could consistently manage shutter speeds down to say a quarter of a second. All this means is that you can get a cleaner shot in low light. But let me stress that when it comes to photography, IBIS won't help much with freezing subject motion in low light. You'll still need to compensate for high shutter speeds by bumping up the ISO. I feel like the biggest selling point of IBIS lies in the video department. One of the things I wish I could have done more on the X105 was take quick snippets of B-roll, but it wasn't a great experience. And even if I tried to take static scenes, the small light body of the X100 camera picks up a lot of the you know, micro shakes from my hands. And even though I could somewhat fix it in post, the overall experience deterred me away from shooting video. Now with the IBIS and the X106, I'm actually shocked at how amazing shooting video on this camera can be. It's so good, in fact, that it puts my X-T4 to shame. I mean, the X-T4 can't even shoot 6.2K or do internal 10-bit 422. That's just crazy. While this sounds all well and good, and it genuinely is a great thing to have, 
I do need to point out one issue that is just as equally important. Having a nice stable shot is great, but having a nice stable out of focus shot isn't great. It seems like a constant gripe for me when it comes to Fujifilm cameras, but no matter how much I pray, the autofocus capabilities always seem to let me down. Fujifilm claims to have improved autofocus, but through my real world tests, I find very little difference to how quick and responsive it is. Basically, I see no difference between the autofocus of the X105 to the 6. I really wish that instead of adding more autofocus options, Fujifilm just focused on improving the autofocus itself. So yeah, just something to keep in mind. Fujifilm has always been known for their incredible film simulations, and the X106 does not disappoint in this regard. The new Reala A simulation is an absolute standout, offering a beautiful nostalgic look that's perfect for street and documentary photography. I'll probably make a separate video talking about all the film simulations as there's quite a lot now. All right, so let's address the elephant in the room, the big problem that I alluded to in the title. After using the X106 for two weeks, I realized that the biggest problem I encountered was how much I enjoyed using it. Let me explain. Going into this review, I had relatively lowish expectations. I've been using the X105 for four years and I thought the improvements in the X106 would be, you know, incremental at best. But as I spent more time with the new camera, I found myself falling in love with it all over again. The familiarity of the design combined with the new features and improved performance created an experience that was both nostalgic and refreshing at the same time. I didn't expect to like the X106 as much as I did, and that's the big problem. It's a problem because now I'm torn between sticking with my trusty X105 or upgrading to the newer model. It's a first world problem, I know, but it's a problem nonetheless. Tim, what do you think about the autofocus, first of all? Yeah, honestly, it's, um, it's pretty good. I enjoy it. I think it's quick. I think it's accurate. Faster than the V, maybe, by hair. Um, but the IBIS is really good, in my opinion. It's allowed me to get a shot that I couldn't normally get because I have quite shaky hands. So, yeah. Well, there you go. So, Tim thinks the autofocus is a little bit uh, better than the X105, whereas I think, you know, it's, it's more or less the same. After much deliberation, I've come to the conclusion that I will be sticking with my X105, at least for now. While the X106 is undoubtedly a fantastic camera, the upgrades, while significant, don't justify the cost of upgrading for my particular shooting style and needs. Don't get me wrong, the improved image quality, IBIS, and new film simulations are all tempting reasons to make the switch. However, the X105 has served me so well for the past four years that it has become an extension of my body. The quality of life improvements in the X106, while welcome, don't necessarily impact my photography in a significant way. That being said, if you're in the market for a compact, versatile, and highly capable hybrid camera, the X106 should definitely be on your radar. And I'm going to put this on record, it's going to be hard to top this model. Even if other brands make retro looking rangefinder style cameras, and even if Fujifilm releases the X107 in 2028. If this is going to be your first X100 camera, go for the 6, you won't be disappointed. If you are thinking of upgrading from the 5, I wouldn't be too concerned unless you want the better video capabilities. Me? Well, I've been playing around with a camera that I reckon is much more interesting. <laughs> <laughs>